Hello and welcome to uh, an episode of Stamscape's Impromptu Live. Okay, we're going to try some things on this paper. I haven't used um, certain types of media on here yet. I mean, I haven't tried a lot of things, but I want to see exactly what we can do in terms of um, impressions in dye-based ink on top of brilliance ink on top of the vinyl and um, some acrylics on here, things that I use oftentimes anyway, but um, let's try it in this piece and let's see where we go from there, okay? So the general composition is going to be um, uh, on the starry vinyl, um, this snowy creek right here. Doesn't that, it's not really going to be snowy though because I'm going to be coloring in greens here. Hello, crazy cat, Diana, God's desire for me. Good to see ya. Uh, hope you're keeping cool wherever you are. I am, uh, I'm doing hot stamping here. It's probably 85 in my studio, so I have my large uh, ice water here that I'm going to be guzzling down here. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, let's see what we can do with this, huh? Hello, Debbie. Oh, good, good. All right, so I thought that I would have swore. <laughs> this paper just keeps fooling me. What I think might probably isn't going to work on this, it seems to, to work. And then what I think will work on here... I thought the Hero Hues would work on here just fine. And it, I mean, it does, you can use it on here, but you just have to spray seal it, and kind of, you know, cause it's going to wipe off a little bit, but um, yeah. 79 is not too bad, send some of that over this way. <laughs> okay, so here's what I'm going to try. I've done this before on foil, all right? And that's, I've done that um, blocking out with the brilliance on here. Now the brilliance on here works really fantastic, you know. Pun intended, it worked brilliantly. Um, it just, it lays down on this and it also, it grabs it and, you know, usually with pigment inks, um, except on matte card stocks, I mean, you kind of have to spray seal them, you know, to really get them sealed down. Um, but on here, it's just not a problem, or it hasn't been for me so far in the way that I've been using it. So, okay, let me get my bearings here a little bit. I'm just going to go this way. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to get a dye-based ink impression on top of this in multiple colors. So, um, I don't know, we'll see how that goes here. All right. Uh, <laughs> It worked on the foils. I have to think that it's going to work here. I don't know what, what type of impression I'll get on here, but it's kind of a base layer. So I'm going to use the um, the pens on top of it. And this is going to look, supposed to look like a kind of a, you know, an Aspens in the fall type of uh, scenario here. So let's see how it goes, okay? Um, one of these, okay, so I'm doing a lot of this cotton ball type of application of the ink on top of, I'm already getting really hot. Um, I was thinking, it. I don't know, maybe a brayer or something like that. I don't know if that would work on here. But if we can get this um, kind of refined, you know, and uh, faster, especially on this, this is like a half page piece right here. Um, that would be really cool um, to, to do something like that or find something like that. So anyways, first things first, okay? So it's all blotchy um, and uneven. I always try to point those things out so when people start doing it themselves, they don't, they don't think, oh my God, this is going on so, I'm, you know, it's going on so blotchy, uh, you know, I'm doing something wrong, you know? It doesn't matter how this really looks because you go into it and, um, you know, once the images are stamped over, but but get it, you know, trans, you know, um, opaque enough to where all the stars aren't just shining right through it, you know, unless that's going to be part of the, uh, 
kind of the look of the piece, you know, having a little bit of a, a kind of a shimmer over the entire thing like that, which you can do too. Hello, Annie. Annie, you can stamp along with this. You have everything that I do. I don't know if you have the images, but you have the brilliance and all that. Annie, Annie, did you ever get, Annie, you, know, you never got your order from, uh, from, uh, Imagine Crass with the, uh, the brilliance, um, white re-inkers, did you? I just ordered one on Amazon. That's due in on Tuesday, I think it is. Okay, let me go a little bit higher up here than where I'm going to stamp. And I like a little bit of a kind of that mist, misty type of uh, look going on in the background. Let's see, this is going to go right here. If you have the unmounted version, just hold it up. Remember to flip it over to, you know, you can see which direction you're going to be stamping it in. And just kind of get the gist of where it's going to go. It doesn't have to be perfectly right on, okay, you know? I mean, you can do something like that, but it, you know, that'd be a lot of work. And uh, I avoid those types of things like that. Okay, so anyway, um, let's see. This is the thing that takes the longest time right here. Uh, and I, I don't know, I'm doing it, I'm doing a large piece right here just because I, um, in my tests of certain media, I like to use a lot of whatever I'm going to be testing out um, just to see it in a larger field. Maybe I should do the opposite, though. <laughs> you know, I should do a smaller one. Because if it works, it works. You know, if it works on a smaller one, it'll work on a bigger one. I don't know. I, I guess I'd like to, you know, if it's going to work, I want it to work, you know, big. I want to see it. Okay, so I'm covering up a lot of this, but, you know, it's a loud piece of uh, vinyl and... I don't want it to completely dominate um, the visuals. It'll it'll be the loudest statement on here, but just uh, you know, dominant is okay, but overpowering, you know, maybe not. Uh, you know, I'm not. I don't want that. Okay, so what this is doing too. Um, uh, if anyone's watching that hasn't seen this before, but this is kind of this This brilliance ink is a water-based fast-drying ink pigment ink and it's very surface oriented anyway, so on this Vinyl Printable cardstock Which dye-based inks won't work directly on here. Those water-based inks, okay? Um, and even if it did dye-based inks are transparent, so um, it'll show right through those types of inks. So I'm blocking this out. And what this does is it almost, um, the thing that it feels like to me is it feels like when I apply media over the top of it, it feels kind of like I'm stamping into a, um, I guess a matte, I was trying to think if it would be semi-gloss or matte. It feels like almost like you've created a foundation of matte cardstock, okay? It's quite accepting of different media, but the thing that's exciting for me on here, I use it on foils too, but I can't really use colored pencil over the top of it too much because on foils it'll kind of scrape off. But on this type of paper, it seems to grip it and adhere to it really well. Okay, I'm almost done right here. This is a long time right here, but filling in. You can see I'm kind of going over here and that's making it a little bit more opaque where I kind of put a, you know, a thicker layer. You still see some of that stuff showing through. Eh, let me see. Let me get some of it. And it dries a little bit more transparent than what it looks like when it's been freshly applied. So you can apply some of it down like that. Let it set up a little bit. It doesn't take too long. And then just go over it again and hit it again. 
like that, and you build up your layers. Let's see here. Hello, Linda. Okay. I ended up ordering from Cuddly Budley. Oh, less expensive and shipping very inexpensive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that was, okay. That is so weird that um, that is cheaper. <laughs> Ordering from overseas. I don't know how they do that with uh, even the cheapest form of postage. It's really crazy. Order some star holographic paper or vinyl, but not koala, so it'll be interesting. Yeah. Uh, you'll have to see, tell us how that one works out. I'm guessing they probably have the same surface. And I'm guessing a lot of these papers are coming out of perhaps the same factory. You know, I can't imagine there's a, a ton of factories uh, churning this type of stuff out, just like pens and things like that, I think. You know, a lot of that stuff is centralized. Um, you know, it's coming out of China. And I'm guessing maybe they do their own designs and just order it from that company, or sometimes some companies making all that type of stuff. like. There's not going to be a lot of variations of holographic like this one right here. Um, and they're just, uh, it's just, you know, there's just different brands for it. Um, and I've often speculated that sometimes maybe one uh, company is doing, uh, manufacturers making things like acrylic paint pens and then releasing it under different brand names. So uh, it's one of those because um, those acrylic um, pens look the exact same in terms of the, uh, you know, this plastic mold here, the tip is the same, the cap is the same. Some of these are um, transparent, translucent. Some of them are opaque, you know, like this right here has this stick, you know, sticker label on it. But you know, they're all, you know, they're all exactly the same. It's not right here. This one has this clear tip. This one's, you know, um, colored right here, but it, the exact same mold is on them and they're all the same exact length, but see that barrel. It, you know, so that's what I'm thinking. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's coincidence that they're using the, you know, it's like the exact same mold and everything like that. You know, those types of things are really expensive to make, so all those dyes and everything like that for that, so. Okay, all right, so. Um, uh, hello, sweet as a bird. Bugs. Travel dreamer, hello. Um, all right, so here's my little chart I made for myself. I think I have this in order. Die brilliant stays on in Claire. All right. Um, the stays on and the Claire were the best impressions. The Claire is the one that really surprised me. I thought that that would never dry and stick and dry very quickly on this type of paper. Okay. Now this is the holographic. This is the star. It's the same. I, you know, I, I got to think it's the same stuff. Um, in terms of the surface. So, I mean, you can use whatever. Um, let me use, I'm gonna use the Claire because um, every time I use that stays on, I kind of ink it up <laughs> yeah, because it dries so fast. I'm trying to think, I think this is the only thing that I'll stamp in black on this. I don't know, we'll see. And we should be able to go just direct, you know, right on here. I think the brilliance is dry enough. I pray, you know, otherwise it's something else that I'm kind of learning. I don't want to do all that whiteout work and have this not show up here. I mean, if it doesn't, I can just go right over it with some more white, but I, that's the last amount of white I want to uh, really apply like this. Saturday Night Lives, Debbie. I was just watching a bunch of old reruns of Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Last night. We got that 
uh, Peacock Network, and I thought, oh, there's a bunch of old um, uh, musical performances I want to see on there. But the musical performances weren't on there because that they, they didn't license uh, the music because streaming didn't exist way back when, so they didn't put it into the contracts so that, you know, the show, if released in streaming or in VHS or in all those types of things one day, um, they would be able to play those things. So, oh, well. So it's interesting you said that because I was w watching a bunch of them. Uh, the first like three or four seasons had the musical guests. So I was watching Paul Simon with George Harrison uh, duet. Okay, so I need to fill in this a little bit more. This is going to go over here. Okay, so uh, Versifying Claire, right? Absolutely no problem on top of that. These are going to be, I'm going to try this, I, and I'm hoping it works. Um, these Aspens here in a dye-based ink over the top of the um, Brilliance White. Like I said, it's worked for me on foil. I can't imagine it won't work on this. It's possible it won't, but, uh, you know, you never know until you try it out. Um, uh, everyone cross their fingers. <laughs> okay, let me see like this too. Okay, that's going to go up here. I'm just I'm just seeing if I've used enough of this. Okay, now I'm not looking for like a perfect impression of this either because I'm going to be using these over the top of it. So I don't need this field of here to be like a perfectly, uh, like a perfect impression, you know, um, unbroken and uh, whatever, vibrant and everything like that. I mean, I hope I get the best of it, but I'm not sure. Okay, and you got the speedball scratch knife. You're ready to rock with the, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, stamp board. Hello, Paula. Good to see you. If anyone else is on, hello to all of you. Thanks for joining in. Okay, let's see here. So, I'm not right. These are supposed to be aspens. Okay, I just do it in yellow, but it's yellow is just not enough contrast. Okay, so I... I mix it up a little bit, you know, with yellows and oranges. So you can see I'm kind of putting some of this on the perimeter like that. But, you know, you can just put it wherever like that, you know, intersperse it. It's not like an even application of it. And then I go in with my yellow. I don't know if you any who has pens out there or markers like this, you know, like big thick ones, you know, if you have them anymore. Everyone used to have some of the... Uh, uh, the Marvy 1500 series markers, um, a lot of people, um, you know, be, this is pre, pre stamp pad, um, days when everyone used markers to color their stamps and then stamp them out. And then what they might do is if they were outline designs, they would color in with Tombow or, um, La Plume double-sided, uh, pens. But for larger stamps, you know, you can get in colors like this. This is something... Um, a lot of people just don't do too much of, you know, um, if all of their um, stamps are more outline based, okay, there's most of it stamping it out in black and um, coloring it in afterwards with whatever media they, you know, they want, um, you know, alcohol inks, whatever, okay. So a lot of times what I see people doing, which you can do, but it's more of like, you know, so someone stamps out like a tree like this, sometimes they stamp it out in black and then they color in around it. So this is kind of this glow of green around it. But, you know, when you have solid images like that, if you want the tree to be green, it's just easier just to color it green and stamp it in green. Then you have a green tree rather than kind of coloring afterwards, okay? So that's especially true on something like this. You know, you wouldn't color, stamp that out in black and then, you know, you're doing autumn scene and then do it this halo of kind of yellow around it. So uh, the markers are a really good way to go for um, this type of application here. Okay, let's see. Uh, these... Um, trunks in here are going to be more white, but I'm giving myself kind of a visual to go by. Now, see, this is like a, 
the trunk going up that way, so I'm going to go in here and just break that up a little bit like that. So it's going in with a lot of dark, and then I go in with a light over to spread it around. It gets into this, but you just kind of roll it off like this. And not a prob. Some people would, it would like panic them to, you know, see, you know, something like this done. But that's, you know, that's the way these pens are, you know, these pens were used. And these pens like this, you know, I mean, I'm getting the color that I want out of this. And this pen's like 30 years old and I'm doing it like that the whole time. Okay, let's let's hope that this uh, let's hope we get a good impression out of this right here. Um, let's see. The Dural Cup. <laughs> okay, I remember that skit. I didn't watch that one. Who was that? Was that Dan Aykroyd? That's Aykroyd, right? I definitely remember. I, I can't remember what that was, but uh, that definitely sounds familiar. Oh, did you? Okay, so Debbie, did you get that little um, growth, like when you open the cap and there's like this like ball of kind of like hard material on it? Um, if you ever got that, um, all you do is just take a paper towel and just wipe it right off. But I don't know what yet. I don't, I'm not quite sure what that was. It was like, like ink fungus or something like that. It's not like fungus, but I don't know. It just gets this ball on there like that. Okay, I'm holding this down for a long time. I probably don't need to. All right. Fairly, eh, you know, uh, decent there. It's really anemic, though. Okay. But that's what these pens are for. But that gave me a lot more variation than I thought. I didn't think I had that much color on there. All right, so let's do the same thing. Let me let me try to make this one faster though. Um, let me just go yellow. When I do this amount of color, uh, blending on here too, uh, like from impression to impression, it they never each impression. Uh, they never look like they never look uniform at all. All right, this is a uh, brilliant yellow. If I had some other colors too, like a lot, I don't have a lot of the colors anymore. Um, like ochre, I wish I had an ochre one right now, but you know, maybe between a couple of these, it's kind of given me a little bit of an ochre-ish, you know, looking tone. There was more residual orange on there than I would have thought. One of the things, if you're doing this type of um, inking up like this, you know, the one pen that's kind of the most dominant in terms of um, if it's moist, like if you have, if you're going on with a really moist, dark color, then you have like a dry yellow. <clears throat> what you might end up doing is you're like absorbing more of that ink that's already down there than transferring this one out. So, oh, just keep that in mind. And... Uh, I don't know, whatever, blend accordingly, okay? But, like I said, I mean, if you want to, you know, know what it's going to look like or have a better idea than just do a test print of that, you know, something like that. All right, so let's see here. This. Okay, so this paper is real shimmery, so my concept here is kind of shimmer on shimmer. I want to do create a kind of a shimmery um, tree on top of this kind of shimmery background. It is getting really hot in here. Temperature-wise, okay. So see that, I mean, it's totally different from this one. Let's see, let's put another one right down here, okay. Do you guys have 1500 series uh, pens? These are the types of pens that um, D. Grunig, if I'm not mistaken, I, I believe she's the one that um, kind of introduce these pens to the stamping world. I don't know for sure, but 
I'm guessing so. Uh, you know, D was around for a really, you know, those early years over at Posh. It wasn't Posh Impressions, it was Posh Presence that she had uh, a store for. And then, you know, her line was Posh Impressions. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure she was the one. And then I saw a lot of, you know, companies ordering these types of pens from um, my old boss, Kathy, you know, who I worked for for years over at Stamp in the Hand. But we wholesaled um, these markers, too. So, you know, a lot of stores bought, direct, uh, bought from her. You know, and Marvy was uh, Uchido's right over in Torrance. So I think we used to go pick stuff up right over there as opposed to, you know, having anything shipped to us. So so I saw a lot of movement with the uh, the pens those days because, you know, um, I was trying to think, did I? I think I was pulling orders when I first started there. I'm not sure. All right, so a little pathway of these things, like maybe we should go down here. Uh, maybe this would be a great, a great area for those fences, you know, a little bit of a kind of structure in here. Um, hmm. That is a really loud surface, <laughs> to, to say the least. All right. Uh, did you toss those, Debbie? Oh, uh, yeah, she made the marker holders where you, you're storing them upside down, right? I miss D and Warren. I miss seeing them around, you know. I didn't do, do it. I used to teach at their stores. But that was like years later. Um, I taught at their, I never got, I never went over to Laguna. I don't even know she had Laguna kind of after a certain time. But I taught at their, I think it was Orange Store, Orange, California. Gosh, all those stores, you know, all over the place. I miss, I miss uh, the presence of so many stores um, around. Okay, so I'm going to add some fences down here. Um, here's my theory on this. Um, there's so much kind of action up top with that, you know, that texturing up there. Um, it's just so busy that having something down here, um, some visual weight, okay. It, I mean, you can do any other types of things. You can throw like an animal down here, something, something that's going to pull a little or distribute, I should say, um, a little bit more of the tension um, throughout. I mean, inevitably, we're going to go up here. We're going to start there and probably end there. When If you gave this card to someone, they're going to look up there immediately and look around, and then they're going to take another look around down here and see what's going around down there. And then their eye is going to go back up here, okay? So I just want to give it a little bit more, I don't know, some, you know, some su substance down here, okay? And you can do that with... I mean, you know, a lot of different ways, but I'm thinking it, maybe I should, I wonder if I should go on with the stays on here. Let me see. I think the stays on is a little bit darker, so I'm going to go with the darkest one um, that I can here. Let's see if I have this inked up enough from the previous time. Yeah. I think it is. Uh, let's go. What's that? <laughs> I 
it had adhered so much it's like stronger than the cling Okay, there we go. A little bit more, uh, that really helped, didn't it? In terms of uh, having something dark and kind of a lead in down there to that top portion, I think. Like that. Yeah, that sure helped. Everything, you know, it's kind of like, you know, like I said, you're trying to, you know, you, I, I think the word compete isn't the word, but you're trying to create some kind of harmony in here. I went a little bit too far over. Those would have been a little bit better. A little quarter inch there. It's kind of a little bit in the water, but so what? But anyways, all right. So let's see what... Uh, let's go ahead and start using the pens on there. Okay. Um... I have these graffitis right here. Let me see about the. Let me see if I have the, the, the Lan Ren Wang brand has a yellow. I know they had a white. There's so few of these larger colors on here. Okay, it's a little bit of an ochre though, or a, I don't know, golden yellow. But this one is a little bit more um, opaque. There's a little bit more of a pigment. Um, to binder, which is water, ratio on this one. So it's a little bit more opaque. Oh, there's these nibs that, extra nibs that they, that come with that. But let's see how this goes here. All right. So eh, maybe I'll even use orange on here. Debbie Toster pens. Yeah, I don't know. well, I don't know. I, I've wiped some of that stuff off mine before. You know, like I said, a lot of my pens are, and it was all, it was certain colors though. I don't know why. You know, certain colors um, um, seem to amass that uh, you know that uh, those little funky little things on there. So what Debbie's talking about, and I'll show you right here, but. There's these little kind of hard kind of nodules um, that can develop on here. I don't. I think it was ink, you know, that was doing that. And um, I don't know what. It's just something in the binder for certain colors. I wouldn't be surprised if I don't know one of these pens might have it, you know, because I don't use these too often. Eh. Eh, nothing. I don't know. It, it happens. It happens from time to time. And for me, it was with certain colors, especially. So I don't know. But uh, uh, I don't know. Debbie, but Debbie tossed hers out. Did you toss out and replace? Hello, Donna. Good morning. Okay, adding this in. Eh, let's see. I'm kind of doing it real evenly right there. I, I need to kind of cluster instead and make this um, application a little bit more irregular, you know, for variation. So let me try doing that. Okay, so um, these pens right here, these acrylic paint pens, are there's a yeah they're supposed to be somewhat opaque. Okay, they're really more translucent. So 
I mean, you can go light over dark with these ones, okay? So that's something where, when I'm working with, um, I don't know, I guess we can call it semi-opaque, okay? Media, I tend to work dark to light. When I'm working with transparent media, um, alcohol inks, um, dye-based inks, you know, things like that, those ones I work from light to dark, all right? Um, because, you know, on those ones, if you add a yellow over a, you know, green or something like that, it's just going to look, you know, yellow green or something like that. You know, the, the colors are going to show right through. But on something like these, um, I want kind of this roundness coming out. So if I make a fist like this, see these, you know, my knuckles right here are lighter and it's darker around here, right? So that's what I want. I want this kind of this illusion of three-dimensional um, three-dimensionality or if that's a word okay coming out you know these volumes I want these volumes to look like you know um, they exist within this two-dimensional space of you know this piece of paper so um, I built out that way and that's why I really like using um, inter you know I, I like using things like you know, the acrylic white paint pen for highlights and things like that, because it looks like these objects are raised and three-dimensional when you do something like that, when you add light back into over something that's darker. Debbie, you should have asked me. Say, so Kevin, uh, what is this, you know, this uh, foreign gunk on my pens? And I would have told you that, um, don't worry, Debbie, that's a sign of a very healthy pen. <laughs> no. But, uh, you know, yeah, you just wipe it off. You just take a, you know, take a paper towel and just, you know, wipe it right off and it'd come right off like that. I tend to go a little bit crazy with these uh, with these dot patterns on here. Anytime I do uh, these types of pens, um, I'm reminded of a couple hikes I've done in Aspen Groves um, during fall, which are really spectacular. And uh, you know, if you're walking underneath them, um, it's really cool having. Um, backlit fall leaves, you know, it just, to me, I don't know, it, to me, the thought of, uh, like a living stained glass always comes to mind. And for us in California, we did, you know, unless we're going to the mountains or something like that, you know, first of all, there's not a lot of, uh, fall foliage out there, um, that's native. Um, their aspens are native, but there's just not very many of them in like Southern California. There used to be more in Southern California in the mountains, but um, they had a beaver program at one point in time, like up in the Big Bear area and stuff like that. They released uh, beavers to kind of create, you know, additional, you know, and to improve the habitats and things like that. But, you know, the beaver you know, naturally, they chopped down all the uh, the trees in the area. So one of those were, you know, the the groves of uh, aspen are, you know, they're largely absent, except this one grove, if it's still around, if it didn't go up in flames um, up in that Big Bear area. I think it was called Aspen Grove, um, which I went hiking in one time. I don't think I did it during fall, though. But uh, you see all these types of things up in uh, the Sierras, though. Years ago, I had Stampin' Up! Red Ink Pad get that gunk on it. Oh, I haven't... Yeah, there's something on that uh, ink, isn't there? You know, that can do that sometimes. 
Crazy Cat Lady says, it happens when red, orange types of colors. Oh, is that it? I think I had it on a pink once now that you mentioned the red part. Um, I think it was my number nine pink. Uh, is this nine right here? Yeah, this one's fine. Unless I already wiped it off in <laughs> years past. But yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds, I don't know, that sounds fa uh, familiar, Crazy Cat. Okay, uh, so I'm trying the Lan Ren Wang. Let me shake this up a little bit more. Yeah, 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 Travel Dreamer. I love that. Um, <laughs> when I do those little intro videos of... Uh, in these scenes, you know, I'm adding in like some different um, sound effects, and one of them is um, wind through trees. So on something like this, when I do the intro video, I'll definitely add in the the wind through trees uh, sound effect. I'm not even sure if people can um, hear it going on because it's really subtle, but that's exactly the thing that I'm, uh, you know, kind of uh, thinking about um, when I'm doing these. Uh, these types of scenes like this. It's just, I don't know, it's just magical. Um, walking around in those, or underneath them especially. I was out in, um, I was teaching classes in um, Colorado one time. I taught out there a few different times, but towards the end of when I was doing a lot of travel, um, I started taking time out in these different states and cities and whatnot to uh, to go see the local sites. And um, when I was doing that Colorado, um, whatever, stint or trip, um, I took some time out and went to, uh, you know, like Rocky Mountain National Park, Estes Park. And uh, yeah, they, I, I wasn't, it wasn't quite fall, but the, you know, the Aspens were, were turning though. And uh, that was um, really nice. And of course, I've talked about Maine a number of times in uh, um, Acadia National Park with all those different colors. I don't think there was any breeze at the time, so yeah, that one, uh, not, you know, no sound or anything like that, but that one was really special walking underneath all that. Uh, backlit, you know, colored leaves is just uh, amazing. Okay, so this one is the Lan Ren Wang. I just want to create kind of a little bit of a, a variation in pattern in here. See, it's kind of starting to shimmer a little bit, you know. So this is what I, what you do is, what I'm doing on here is I'm kind of creating this little bit of pattern like, or not pattern, but cluster like that. And then I'm going in this other area like that. So kind of cluster it a little bit, you know, like that, you know, and make it a little bit more irregular rather than having everything too uniform. I was going a little bit too uniform with that first uh, orange. So I had to kind of catch myself, but I think we tend to do that. We tend to do this right here. Um, that's just with, with stars and the sky, you know, everything's kind of like real even like that but kind of um, vary it a little bit more. Um, so that it looks like, um, you know, in, in this case, like the lighting is hitting um, some of the branches a little bit differently. Uh, you know, what you would see in, you know, trees or anything type of thing like that. It'll be more so when I get down, you know, when I get into the lightest of colors here. Okay, but anyways, observations on the paper. I wasn't. I haven't even been thinking about it because um, this foil, uh, or not foil, but the the vinyl, is you know, it's accepting the ink just fine. But it's it's really not the um, the vinyl. It's it's the uh, it's the brilliance white is just you know it's taking this ink just fine. I'm mean, I'm sure I can go on top of this too, and it would. I, I'm not sure if it would be. Um, you know, how much of this ink or how much of this paper would be showing through you know, like a yellow dot up there. Well, let's see. Let me try it here. This one. Yeah, actually that looks pretty opaque like that, doesn't it? Like that. 
you can see it right there. It's not too bad. It looks pretty opaque directly on top. Or because, but you know, we had to um, color in those. Uh, we had to block out those trees in the background. Boy, this is really uh, dark right here. Here we go. All right, so filling in on this one right here, I can't wait to get to the colored pencils though. Um, I'm not gonna, this isn't going to be like snowy down here. Okay, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna put greens into this um, meadow. I'm gonna do like blue down in this water. So it's gonna be more, you know, less, um, I don't know, we might be combining the best of both worlds. You know, we're going spring in the grasses and fall in the trees. You can do wildfire, you know, fly, uh, flowers down here. <clears throat> or may, I, may, I might make it a little bit more, you know, brownish green or something like that. You know, a little bit more fall-ish. Okay, this one's the Lan Ren Wang. <clears throat> okay, so yellow here. So this one's, eh. This one's a little bit brighter yellow. This one's a little bit duller. They're about the same value though, uh, in terms of light and darkness. Hello, Paulette. You've missed a lot of the same though, Paulette. So, you know, um, if you've seen one dot applied, you've seen them all applied. <laughs> okay, so here's the lighter one like this, okay? And see, I'm kind of clustering it. Unfortunately, these lighter ones, we'll see how this vinyl takes it. But again, it's kind of more of the uh, um, the brilliance um, white that's doing that. But see how nice that really stands out like that? When this dries, it's almost like drying right before our eyes. Because look at this. See how light this is right here? No. Eh, okay, it's still as light as that up there. Watch, okay, wh when I get over here, let, we'll compare it and we'll see if this has already dried and it looks much darker, that, you know, there's less contrast in it. So, you know, that's good in some ways, you know. If you want, you know, your paints to kind of blend in with the background, they become more translucent, okay. So, you know, for the blending purposes, visual blending, it's not physically blending. Um, that's kind of good, but it would be nice to have like a bigger range of these that are more opaque so I can get that, you know, that real contrast. So this is where I tend to use a little bit more because, okay, so if these get a little bit darker as it dries, sometimes if you go over it again and you build up more of that same color, you know, you'll get a more opaque look to it, okay? But I just assume, I just assume get it in one go, you know, and not have to layer and layer and layer. Although, I don't know, that one's looking pretty good. I don't know, maybe this, maybe there's less absorbance, I don't know, whatever, um, that kind of creates that uh, kind of darkening of this ink when it, you know, paint when it dries, so. I don't know, actually, that's that's holding up pretty good there. We'll see, okay. On these pens right here too, you can kind of draw on their side and get a little bit of a larger dot, or you can go vertical like that and get, you know, a much smaller dot. So I think to expedite it, I think I find myself using the side of it a little bit more. Now this is a very busy looking tree, you know, with that shimmer on there, but that's where that white pigment ink at the end comes into play. You had it in the back, do whatever you're going to do on the front, and then you add another layer of the white over the top of it um, just to mellow it out quite a lot, you know, because it looks just too busy this way. Let's 
So keep that in mind as you're doing this. You know, these are, uh-oh, we went out of focus. What happened here? Okay, there we go. I don't know, maybe it was getting too busy for the camera. Camera couldn't focus. <laughs> Let's see. I purchased vinyl from 143 Vinyl. Ah. I'm not familiar with that. I wasn't even, I, I, I wasn't, you know, I don't use the things like crickets and all that stuff. And, you know, I wasn't really familiar with um, vinyl as a service, you know, in the crafting community until I started looking for the vinyl holographic, I mean, uh, the rainbow holographic material. And there were so many vinyl versions, vinyl sticker paper versions. And it was like, oh, huh. I wonder what everyone's using that for. And I looked and looked and looked, you know, for um, the cardstock version and uh, had a really tough time, but not knowing that, you know, we can utilize the vinyl to stamp on, you know. I don't know, I didn't see people doing that, so. I don't know, it never occurred to me. So, uh, I'm certainly glad that's out there these days. Is this, is this, is that out of focus or is that in focus like that? Okay. All right. So, um, kind of a dollar yellow right here. Okay. This is holding up, uh, surprisingly well. Um, it's holding up better against this, um, white brilliance on vinyl i think than the white brilliance on cardstock i don't know i don't know maybe that maybe more of the brilliance is on the surface um or being retained on the surface of this vinyl more than the cardstock i don't know Shake this up a little bit more. Uh, what type of uh, what type of uh, vinyls do you use, Travel Dreamer? Hello, Paulette. All right, I said to Paulette. Hello, Margaret. <laughs> Much better than the gory ones I jumped on a few days ago. This is pretty. Oh. Don't go on the uh, haunted house. Uh, avoid the haunted house ride at Disneyland. We'll put a warning on the... Uh, on the uh, Halloween based ones. Caution, gory, gory stamping um, ahead. All right. That is that. We'll add some white in there too, but I want to. Uh, just leave it at that for right now. Okay. All right. So this is missing a lot of the, um, the tones and textures down here. Okay. So like I said, this, you know, it looks wintry right now, but you can make any winter types of um, foundation into whatever you want. I mean, when, when something's called a winter landscape, you know, if you color, if you leave it all in white or something like that, it's snow. But if you color it in with uh, greens, it's whatever. It's spring. If you color it into browns and stuff like that, then it's, you know, it's the West. It's California. <laughs> so you can make it whatever you want, okay? All right, so um, what I'm thinking about is some different green tones. I want shadows being cast by the trees. Um, for um, 
continuity, you want to bring some of these yellows down in this area down here as well. Okay. Um, see these things? I mean, you can do your zones in completely different um, color schemes if you want. You can make, if you're doing um, a green grassy terrain, you can do greens down here. And if there's blue skies up in your sky or something like that, not in this way, in case when we're using the, uh, the holographic paper, but um, you can do that. But um, if you're going for more of kind of a slight impressionistic feel where you're <clears throat> coloring light and things like that, then you're going to be, want to do, you know, utilize, um, the colors that are going throughout your piece interspersed in other areas that aren't necessarily of that same type of substance. So if you have a brown cabin in here, if it's a wood cabin or something like that, chances are you would use some of the colors um, from this on there, you know, because light reflects off of different things, okay? And it just brings in a little bit more continuity into it, you know? Um, if you, things like, uh, if you do things like, uh, um, watercolor painting or something like that, or, you know, acrylics or oils, you know, you would be doing that type of thing. Um, but like I said, I mean, you, people do do things um, where it's a little bit more of like a, like a stained glass thing where there's like definitive little zones of separate types of colors like that, okay? But again, if you want to go for a little bit more continuity, uh, color continuity throughout, then utilize those. Okay, so I'm, I'm saying that because what I'm doing is I'm grabbing those types of colors that have been used in, say, the trees like that. I didn't really use so many greens like that, but um, you know, like those brown tones that were used in here, okay, are right here, yellows and oranges. So it's kind of a little bit of a range from dark to light like that, okay? And see, this is another range of tones. So I'm going from something that's kind of light to dark in the greens like that, you know? So these areas would represent the lighter areas and these ones would represent more of the shadows like that, okay? But, and that's what I always had people do in my classes, you know, in order to um, kind of learn about kind of color transitions. I always had people grab their colors of what they're going to be using it rather than keeping it in theory and I have them lay them out from light to dark like that. So if they're doing the sky, blue sky, then they're grabbing their blues like that, okay? So it, that's what I always do. I mean, even if I don't pull them out and put them all together like that, like an arrow like that, um, that's the kind of the general type of thing. And here it is right here. Here's, oh, okay, well, here's the colors, you know, from that tree. So here they are right here in this form, and here they are right here in this form, all right? So it's, you know, color theory, you know, and all that. I, it's not really color theory, but it's color kind of application um, strategies. That's really more of what this type of thing is about, and it's nothing more than just doing that. If it blends to your eye just fine, it'll blend on the paper just fine, all right? All right, Paula, good to see you. Thanks for joining in and checking it out. All right, so anyways, uh, let's see. What colors do we start off with? Okay, so I'm going to have this um, more in greens down here. I don't want to, you know, uh, do this wintry type of thing. You could, you know, um, but, you know, if this was all snow down here, chances are there wouldn't be any... Uh, um, of these leaves left on the tree, you know, it'd be deeper in the uh, the uh, winter like that. So I am going to start adding some of these colors down like this. And colored pencils, while they're not, uh, you know, they're not really like transparent. They're a little bit transparent, okay? You know, I mean, if you go like this, over this, and if you go with a darker green over the top of it, you know, some of that lighter green is going to be showing through this darker green on the top of it. So I usually go with the lighter tones, and then I develop the shadows So uh, later on. So I don't know, if you can't figure out which one uh, color is darker than the other, then it doesn't matter. Go with either one. And that's the same thing with dye-based inks or any kind of inks like that. 
Let's see, I haven't tried using the shiny or vinyl yet. I'm glad you're showing us different paper. Yeah, yeah, Caroline, it's, it's the thing that I'm trying to do over this past year and a half is really um, explore a lot of different media surface combinations, okay? So I've used a lot of, one of the, the mediums um, that's really unlocking a lot of doors for me in the things that I've explored so far is this Brilliance White Pigment Ink. All right, that has been laid down here and that's the thing that's allowing me to lay down these colored pencils right over the top of it because that Brilliance Ink, on top of this vinyl especially, it is really sticking to it. Um, it doesn't stick to that. Uh, it applies and dries on top of um, foils like this, you know, metallic foils and things like that. But it doesn't adhere to it as soundly as this vinyl is doing. So it's really pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome that when you can really go on with something like this medium right here, and it, I don't feel too much different applying this on top of this Brilliance ink on here than it is going on top of this white copy paper. It's, it's really, really affixed to it. I don't know if that's the case with all vinyls and Brilliance, you know, because I haven't tested out a bunch of different brands. I'm assuming that it is, but I don't know. A lot of the things that I've assumed, it just, I don't know. Some of it's worked and some of it has, and I thought for sure that the um, the Hero Arts White would do the same thing that the Brilliance did on here, but it didn't. It kind of scraped off as I was using the pencils, so I don't know, do, do a lot of tests. You know, a lot of people have a lot of different um, media. I, I I'm guessing most people, you know, when I'm, as I'm saying this, I'm thinking most most of you have a lot more media already than I do. So, you know, just, I don't know, test it out to see if it works and try um, some different combinations. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, I don't know, comments, you know, out there on a lot of media that I've found over this last year that I don't know, it's someone has mentioned something somewhere along, along the lines and mentioned something's not compatible with a certain surface. And it just seems to become, I don't know, like, a, I don't know, standard knowledge, you know, media knowledge. Um, and so people just don't try it out, but um, uh, like foils and things like that. Um, or someone will say, oh, I heard you couldn't stamp on foil. Or, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll see a lot of comments like that, you know, with the things that I did. I don't know. Um, I didn't hear those things, so I tried it. And, it, you know, it might not work with certain brands or certain types of inks or whatever. But, you know, if you work with a certain types of media like stays on or Brilliance that dry on there, I don't know, it worked for me just fine, so... I don't know, maybe, you know, for me, maybe it's a good thing I didn't, you know, hear about those things. Maybe I wouldn't have tried it either. But anyways, here, this, you know, this is getting more kind of spring-like, right? You know, the more color you add in. So we suddenly went from winter to, I don't know, whatever, spring. Now, if I start bringing in, I don't know, ochres into this and browns, maybe it turns more like fall, whatever, you know. But you can just, you can just kind of keep developing as you go along. And here's the thing that's surprising to me, too. I thought, okay, well, we can get um, a certain amount of colored pencils laid down on here, but I've found that you can really layer them just like going on with a matte paper like this. So this will be my third green that I'm using on this. But see here. So um, you can see the little shadow areas in here, these little design elements in here. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of going in there and darkening those as kind of a base, all right? So it's the third 
um, value of green that I'm using on here, and it's still applying, you know, so, you know, I, naturally you're not going to be able to layer like you would on um, a textured paper that's really conducive for colored pencils, but I don't know, you know, this isn't too bad for, you know, we're, we're able to get a certain amount of uh, this applied on this paper, you know, that's really, really smooth, and it's been applied with a pigment ink over the top of it, so I don't know. I'm really surprised at uh, the capabilities. And the, okay, these are Prismacolors too. Someone told me that these are softer than a lot of um, brands of colored pencils, so maybe that's coming into play as well. I don't know. All right, so a little bit more tone. So those are the three greens, okay. Uh, let's go in with the yellow, okay, and let's bring in some of that yellow from the trees down into here. Okay. There's a little bit more color continuity that way. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we have here. Um, glad you like it. Hello, Cheryl. Um, yeah, Caroline. Uh, the colors together are... Um, it makes it visual for people. And when I taught workshops before and people were doing like a sunset scheme or something like that, um, if they weren't grabbing their pads out and putting it together in some sort of range, okay, if, if it was the first time they've done it before, um, sometimes it wasn't blending very easily for them. So I just told them, you know, you just grab their things and just lay them out like that, you know, and lay them out from light to dark. It doesn't have to be this brand or anything like that, but you just grab your pads and if it transitions like that visually, then when you're layering, you know, like sunset tones or something like that on paper, um, it'll blend really easy for you. A lot of people don't, they're just not used to doing that, you know, but that's what I do um, to make it easier for myself. I'm not inherently, you know, I'm more of a black and white illustrator um, and fan of that. So for me, um, lining them up like that just, it helps immensely for me. Now, I've been doing that, this for a long time. So, you know, I, and I know what, you know, colors I have, but I still, you know, I'll still grab my you know, my Copic, you know, not Copics, but my alcohol markers, and I'll just kind of grab them all together, and it just, for me, it just helps a lot with color. Um, I don't know, but, you know, sometimes people say, oh, you know, uh, you're really good with color, though, and stuff like that, and, uh, or, you know, they think I'm, you know, it's just inherently in me, but it's not. What I'm doing is I'm putting together <clears throat> the thing that I can see really well, kind of being more of a black and white illustrator, is as I see values going from light to dark like that. So I'm putting together that range of tones from light to dark. Here's browns right here. Here's the lighter brown, darker brown. So I'm just starting with my lighter brown, and I'll just work into my darker brown. But I have them right here in front of me, and that helps me to, to visualize it too, because I have the colors right there. And then when I start laying it down like this, you know, I just go with a really light touch at first, and then I inherently, and then I, not inherently, but I incrementally get darker with that one color like that. So, um, I don't know, that's, that's my process, and that's, that, you know, it just makes it so much easier. Okay, there was another question. Yes, Caroline, I did do the brilliance directly 
onto the background. So there was this big field of white in here, and then the white went up here. You can see that white haze around there, around those um, trees. You know, because I didn't know exactly. I wasn't trying to go exactly where the trees were going to go. I just wanted kind of a general area because I'm going to put some white over the top of it. So it's going white, imagery, coloring, and then white over the top of that. So it's going to be sandwiching the imagery in between white as a base and white as kind of the final touch over the top of it. All right, so we're going to take this a little bit more from... Um, uh, spring into kind of summer, going a little bit brown right here. I tend to use browns um, a lot with my dye based inks too when I'm doing kind of a grassy feel. I, I found that browns within kind of those grassy tones kind of mellows out, you know, the hot, you know, vibrancy of all those different greens. A lot of times if I'm just using greens in dye based things, it looks too, you know, kind of electric green. And I find that brown kind of really mellows it out in a lot of areas. Not over the whole thing, but you, you know, you can add it in the shadows like this and leave those other parts just as is. And just keep in mind too, during this whole thing, I keep mentioning this all throughout the process. Like my brilliance ink was really blotchy and kind of not smoothly applied, but it doesn't need to be because once you stamp your imagery over the top of it, you really can't see too much of it. Now I'm going on with the colored pencils. You know, all this in here becomes very busy and electric with all those little dots and things like that. But then over the top of all this, I'm gonna put in little areas of white pigment ink over the top of it that's gonna take care of that portion of it. So um, things don't always have to look, don't look for, um, Kind of like every step of the process looking like kind of the finished result um kind of uh i don't know i don't know yeah like an end finish to it these are all preliminary kind of layers that you're adding in until you get to those final touches like that so um you know and i'm not a good colored pencil user. I haven't been using them. I have a, like a 30 year old uh, um, pack of uh, colored pencils that I'm using right here. It's just because I haven't used them, you know. So I'm not by any means an expert or even any good at it, you know. It'd be more like a, my use of colored pencils would be more kind of a along the lines of remedial, you know. I wouldn't be taking colored pencil 101. It would be like 001 if I was in school. Okay, so here's some trees right here. I'm adding a little bit of shadow work underneath it, okay. I mean, look how good this sticks right here. This is done in the um, stays on right here. And I'm going over this black right here. Okay, the black, the colored pencil is not going to look as though it's over the top of this thing. But this is not scratching off. That really amazes me about this vinyl. It has really grabbed the inks. It's grabbed the brilliance ink. The stays on ink goes on top of the, uh, the brilliance ink and it's really stuck on there. I'm digging in with a sharp, you know, waxy medium and it's not scratching off any of this. So I don't know, this, this vinyl to me in certain applications just seems to be a very, very good medium in terms of um, the media that it accepts. And again, you know, it's the brilliance, I think, you know, because I tried the Hero Arts one. The Hero Arts one, now if you don't have brilliance um, white, I, one thing I haven't tried is, I haven't tried laying down something like, you know, the Hero, um, he, oh, here we go, right here. I haven't tried laying down something like a Hero Hues like this over the top of it and then spray sealing it with a workable fixative and then going in over the top of it with something like colored pencils, that might work, okay? If you have a workable fixative, you know. And the workable fixatives, um, as opposed to just a, an acrylic spray, um, 
the workable fixatives um, spray over the surface with a little bit of tooth to it. It's a little bit gritty so that people that are doing things like um, chalks, pastels, charcoal, and graphite work, you know, it's not all slick and smooth so that you can, you know, you can apply more and then you spray seal it and then apply more. And then, you know, you just spray seal in between your layers of those types of things. And, you know, th that type of media requires a little bit of a tooth, you know, in order to apply the media. So um, that's where that would come into play if you were using colored pencil on top. of If it does work, I don't know if it works or not, but... Um, it would work better than not spraying it because I, you know, it was just digging right off of it to me uh, when I tried it. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, Travel Dreamer. Experimenting is definitely a big part of the fun. Uh, that's true. Donna, one of the things about this paper, too, um, this paper apparently is some kind of. This company has like two versions of this koala one has two versions of this paper. And this one was supposed to be, um, it said the, um, I don't know if it said the new, but it, it's like a, a new formula from the previous one. I think visually they look the same, but there's something on the coating that's different. Okay. But that's really, they, you know, it's designed for printers. So, but I don't know if, um, the thing that, is on the surface or whatever they did. Oh, by the way, this is black here, so I'm going on and deepening the shadows with this black here now. So I don't know if that's coming into play. It, it might. I have no idea. Um, I don't know. Uh, you guys that have a lot of different finals, you, <laughs> you'll be able to tell me that more so than, than, than I, you know. Uh, I have one brand of vinyl that I've tried so far. Luckily, it's working with all these different things because, I don't know, I have a lot of other things that I'm trying. I'm not trying like, you know, so I'm not going to be trying like a ton of different brands. If I found one that's going to be working for me, you know, if there's a different like pattern, like a star pattern or something that's really cool, then I'll probably, you know, you know, think about giving it a shot. <sighs> Sorry about that focus right there. But anyways, you see this right here? This is like, I don't know, in some of these areas where I'm putting the black over it, that's like the fourth layer in that area of, you know, colored pencil. And it's not too bad. Um, it's not kind of balling up on me. Um, you know, with, you know, too much wax, you know, of an application where it's digging off the... Uh, the wax that's already been applied by wax, you know, the colored pencil on there. But see that right in there, how it's looking a little bit more dimensional now with that thing. And then again, see, I worked it from um, the lighter tones and I'm just getting increasingly darker. And when you get into the darker tones, then you're kind of more, a little bit more of the, you know, shadow based or something like that. Um, And if you're good at colored pencils, just, you know, and, and really experienced, just don't expect it, you know, to have, you know, a matte coat or something like that, uh, you know, a, a tooth, you know, textured surface type of look, um, you know, that are really perfect for colored pencils. It's not going to be that, but um, I don't know. Like I said, the, the trade-off for having... Um, you know, this going on up here, <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not a bad trade off like that. You know, you know, the colored pencils are just kind of like a, it's almost kind of like a bonus, you know, type of uh, thing going on here. Now here's the thing, you know, too, I mean, if you might be able to go on with like a, you know, if I want to lift, I wasn't exactly sure exactly where this is going to be, but if you want some of this, um, to be reflecting some of that up there, you might be able to take like a wet, you know, cotton ball or paper towel and wipe some of that brilliance off so that you get some of those stars reflecting in this water area below. Wouldn't that be kind of cool too? But again, here's the blues right here that I'll use on here. And, uh, you know, light, 
light darker. The one's not really like a medium right there. It's just a warmer tone, tone of blue. But we'll go in here a little bit like this. But I love, you know, I haven't used a lot of colored pencils. I do like the look of it in scenes. But I just like, I really like, you know, the look of it with this super busy tone up top like that because colored pencils it, you know colored pencils are one of the I guess along with like pastels or something like that there's some of the more mellow looking types of um, media out there so it just makes it looks more like it's here I'm sorry this I'm trying to focus in here um, I just like that contrast in terms of this really soft look down here of the colored pencils. It's just so mellow like that. Okay, now here's here's an example of kind of the blending of different tones. See this like blue like this? I really like this in other areas. So see that right there? I don't know if you can see that. There's a tiny tinge of it in there. But this type of blue, blues and greens look really nice. And it could be very subtle, but see, I'm just, I'm just putting it all over in there so that this area in here just kind of visually harmonizes with, with this a little bit more. There's you know, this little tinge right there. I'll put a little bit out here. And it doesn't read as the, you know, we're not going to be looking at this saying, oh, look at that blue grass or something like that. Um, but it just adds that little touch up in those areas. Okay, so here's the darker one. And again, kind of going in those little darker areas, like right around the edges right here. And see how that really kind of creates that additional um, kind of additional volumes in here like that. Yeah, that, that dark, and see this dark blue, I use black up here in these shadow areas, but I can use some more of that, again, for um, kind of visual continuity between this. I'll put, like, maybe use some blue, down, you know, in the shadows around some of these rocks or underneath this tree here, about like so. It's not, again, it's not, you know, like perfectly applied either. But again, I'll use some white pigment ink in here and that'll kind of blend things together a little bit more so too. All right. I think I need a little deer or something out here. Um, um, oh. Um, let's see. I just got done with those monster maps and my desk is a clutter, absolutely cluttered with stuff. All right, so I want a little bit more texture in these areas before I come into it with the, um, with the white pigment ink. Okay, I forgot about this too. Okay, so I went with these blues right here, kind of working from light to darker, but then you can throw in the black in here. And that's what I did with all of these right here. You know, there were some browns like that, and I threw in the black like that. You know, in these greens right here, you know, I do have these in here like that. And the black was like at the end of that range too. Okay, so all of your different zones, you know, if you've stamped out some imagery in black, I would recommend kind of finishing off some areas in that and it doesn't have to be a huge area, okay? Um, if it's dye-based inks and I'm doing a whole scene and tones like that, if I've stamped my imagery in black, it's often, you know, a little bit of a vignette on the four corners or coming into it a little bit more like that. All right, it gives it a little bit more mass too. I like that river in here on that, uh, on this vinyl. 
or the little stream, I guess. All right, let's see. Okay, let's go with the stays on. All right, the stays on will have the best chance of uh, um, sticking to wax, you know, of the uh, of the pencil here. What do you sharpen your colored pencils with? Uh, Caroline, I just use um, any type of uh, sharpener. It's, you know, I can use the hand one, but mostly what I do is, if, you know, I'm probably due to sharpen some of these after I like this black one right here. Um, I like using just a standard electric sharpener. Now I know there's um, issues with certain types of uh, sharpening, okay? And someone told me that my colored pencils are the pr old formula colored pencils, but I have sharpened um, literally thousands of colored pencils because I was a, a volunteer in the uh, the middle school art program at my son's middle school, and in part of my duties was you know I became the um, um, supplies coordinator um, for the uh, for the program. There's 1,500 kids in the st in the school, and they all did you know different projects, not the same ones, but they did them different grades. But there was a couple assignments that utilized a white and black colored pencil. Okay, and I used color. You know, I used there was no way I was doing, using a hand sharpener for that because I might be sharpening it up like 200 pencils like several times a week, you know, that same set that was going around to different classrooms. But one of the things about those sharpeners is you go in there and it has that automatic off thing. So it's going zzzz, and then, it, you know, when you go in there, it turns off when it's like fully sharpened. But for me with colored pencils, I just lay it in there like that. And then I don't go all the way to the end. I don't want this like razor sharp on there. Okay. So I just, you know, I just would go zzzz, zzz, you know, and that would be it, you know. But one of the things that, um, I don't know, I was used to doing, I wasn't even thinking about it, was you have to go in there directly. If you have any pressure going like this or this, you know, as you're going into that hole, if you lift up at all, you know, it really stands to, you know, potentially break the, uh, you know, the tip like that. So I just go in there like that uh, a couple times and that was it. And like I said, um, we were just, we were using different brands for that white and black colored pencil too. So I don't know if it was these ones and those ones as well, but I never had a broken tip. And then we also had sometimes, um, when we were in class, we didn't have access to the, um, uh, you know, the, the sharpeners. So if I was volunteering for that project in class, we had sharpeners in class for the kids to use, you know, because inevitably some, you know, kids are going to be breaking their tips and the the hand sharpeners, I didn't have any problems with either, but those ones you really have to be careful with, you know, as you're spinning it around in there. If you have any pressure going up or at an angle instead of directly straight in, you know, you have troubles and don't press in too hard with the manual ones. You want to just, just gently do it and just use very little pressure going in like that. Don't jam it in like that and use a lot of pressure like that. Ha, you know, get more rotations for that, um, uh, you know, whatever sharpening you want, you know, the process, you know, get more, more rotations, less pressure, more time, you know, so instead of uh, getting it in, you know, five rotations or like that to get what you need, do it in 15 or something like that. I don't know, that's what I'm thinking about. And uh, again, with the electric sharpener too, I'm not using a lot of pressure going in there. I'm just gently going in there and just pulling out again before that. And I don't know, I, I never had any problems with that. Or maybe if I did, um, I don't know. I don't remember um, breaking stuff, but I maybe I did break a few, you know, and then I just kind of forgot them. And then I kind of got the touch or whatever with those. And, you know, in that volunteer program too, those sharpeners weren't good ones. They were like, you know, used heavily and they were just, you know, they weren't like some kind of professional sharpener or something like that. It was just, I don't know, your standard, uh, your standard, uh, I don't know, just cheapo 
you know, office supply, you know, depot or whatever, you know, where they were getting it from. I think I had one sharpener, and now I'm thinking about it. I think one of them was working. I think they had two, and one of them was working. So, you know, it was all like a, um, you know, those types of stuff. You know, all those supplies were paid for through the foundation, so uh, not the school thing. So, you know, we, we were on a budget, you know, so uh, we had to watch all that type of stuff. But I have heard about the breaking, though. And I did do a test where it was kind of, you know, I, you know, I used a little bit of pressure and it broke in my electric sharpener. Hello, Jen. Good to see you. Goodbye, Debbie. <laughs> okay. So anyways, you see that, you know, those little extra textures in there. It kind of filled it out, didn't it? You know, like that. It gives it a little bit more of a textural range by having stuff like that in there. My little black in here like that. But look how busy that top portion is. So, I don't know. I think this whole thing is kind of harmonizing with that top portion a little bit more. This is so busy. When I first started this off, when I was mentioning to people, is this is so kind of crazy busy of a surface. And this area down here is not going to compete with that. But what we can do is we can bring this area in here and have it kind of harmonize as much as possible with that top portion, okay? All right, so this has been laid down. We have all these different textures up here. That texture does not exist down here at all, right? <clears throat> so what I like to do on my pieces is I like to, um, oh, can the shadows be put anywhere or certain areas? Good question, Caroline. My shadow work is really quite basic, okay? If I had a moon over here, I would have my shadows going off in this direction, like this one would be casting a shadow over this. As a matter of fact, let's do that a little bit. Okay, so what shadows would this be casting down in the water? Well, if the, you've established the water as blues or something like that, then what I would do is I would create blue shadows down here being cast by this. Okay, so it's a little bit more blue in here. Okay, you can use black, okay, but normally, um, when it comes to shadows, um, now I had to go black a little bit more down here, like I said, because I couldn't see it using this green, okay? My darker green, so I did go to black, but see this right here? That could be, you know, this tree casting that shadow right in the water right there. So a lot of people think, um, they're thinking it, it's not really a visual thing, but um, shadows are darker versions of whatever color they are, okay? So you add light to something and it just tends to wash out, you know, the brightness of a color. So this pad right here, you can see right here, here's the lighter version, it's the blue, and this is the darker version of it. This isn't black shadow in here, you know? So all these different versions are lighter versions of that color. So, like I said, if this grass is green down here, then you use your darker greens. Okay, so if I had my light source down here, you know, you can have your shadows coming across here. If you have a moon or something like that here, then your shadows would be, for this one, these trees, the shadows would be going this way because you kind of aim, you know, just roughly your shadows in the direction of the light source that's casting the shadows. So these, sh you know, shadows down here would be going more this direction, okay? Now, I'm not really great at shadows. I fake it, you know, mine all the time. But that's just the general type. So on this one right here, I don't have like any formal thing. So I just added the shadows like at the base of this tree down here. Now, that right down here, see, if I make this area too dark, then I'm not going to be able to see the silhouette of this fence as much in here okay so that's why i'm not i'm choosing not to darken this area in so i'm just doing it sans shadow right in there okay so you're do, you know you're oscillating things in here there is plenty of open space so that's why i've added more of a shadow in that area okay so add your shadows if they're conducive for you know whatever's going on in the scene if it's going to interfere with something then just leave them as is you know uh, without it you know, like if you had a person right here and you really wanted to stand out or a, you know, squirrel or something like that, then don't put it in dark shadows down there, even if in theory 
that tree above it or whatever you'd have would be casting a shadow on it. Just leave it as is. That's, you know, it's art, like artistic license um, when it comes to that. But that was a good question. Okay, so um, I'm adding in little leaves like this. If this is a fall type of scenario, then um, chances are, you know, you'd have some of these leaves on the ground like this. They really stand out quite a bit down there. Sorry, I can't like zoom in much more. My camera's like, or my auto focus on the lens. Um, let's see these little textures down in here. Okay. So again, this is kind of a, this is one of those things that we were talking about in terms of a kind of visual continuity and whatnot. You know, you have these colors that are going on in the water and then the grass and the trees and down here, but you can also do it from a textural way with things like this down in here, okay? If these things stand out too much, you can always go down to, you know, you can go down to, you know, 0.7 millimeter acrylic paint pen instead of, you know, your big, loud three millimeter. Those little dots really do stand out quite a bit down here though. Um, but again, the white pigment ink is going to go over the top of it anyway, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, so, you know, up in this area in here, it's probably more of a nighttime sky. I mean, this is called, this paper's called Starry, right? But, you know, we're taking our liberties with it. So if you do want some of these um, highlights in here, I can go in here with, you know, white paint pen. I won't spend too much time with this one, but you can also come up here and add in some, you know, stars. This would be kind of an interesting one. I've mentioned this before, but um, here, let me see if I can do it. It's kind of hard to do it because I can't even see it here. I'm standing right, you know, sitting right in front of it. But see, when you go like that, you can see your stars. So at a different angle, people can get, you know, that you give this card to can get a little bit of a different treat. You know, it looks different like that than it does like that, right? So let me see. So here's like, you know, um, I already added in those other stars in here, but um, let's see. All right, now if anyone does a, you know astronomy, you got to give me a give me a break here. <laughs> but you know, so you go like this, and you know, here's like Orion right there. If anyone saw that, you know, that was an astronomer or whatever, they would know. But the, there's Orion's belt, and here's I don't know. Orion's sword suddenly got, you know, more stars, you know, in this scene. But, you know what I mean? You, you can do little fun things like that. Or, you know, you're giving this, uh, I'm sending this to Linda for her birthday, you know. I can put, like, LB in, you know, star formation up there that they would never see. But then if they go like that, you know, there'd be an LB right there, you know. Wouldn't that be cool? You know what I mean? Or you can do, like, little crystals up here that are kind of invisible. Actually, you can kind of see it right there. But, I don't know. It looks more like that, you know, most of the time. But you can do all these little hidden things up there. Wouldn't that be fun, you know? You send in an anniversary card, you know, to someone, you know, and whatever you do there, initial, you know, uh, you know, A plus Z with a little heart. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Getting a little corny. But you know what I mean? You can do all little hidden things like that. I would do that, you know, if I was sending this card to a kid. I would put their initials up here in white pen so that, you know, you can say, hey, uh, do that. Or if you have like glow in the dark ink or something like that, you tell them to, you know, put it in the thing and take it in the closet and it would have their initials up there or something like that. I think that'd be really fun. But those are those little things, you know, that I think uh, are really cool to do as those, um, I don't know, little hidden types of finishing touches in there that can be really, you know, interesting as like a, I don't know, like a third layer of interest in here. This would be the first one, this would be the second. Then you have all these sub layers of, um, I don't know, whatever discovery or whatever for some people, you know, or uh, let's say, um, you know, your card is sitting on someone's, you know, whatever mantle or it's on like a refrigerator okay uh you know that you've sent it to 
and um, someone goes over their house and says, oh, hey, that's a, you know, that's a kind of a cool card or something like that. If you have those little things like that hidden in there that you, you know, you've made that person aware of it and they think that's a cool little feature, that would be something that they would tend to bring out, you know. So they would say, oh, and look at this, you know, and they would hold it out for them and say, oh, see, there's your initials or there's Orion or whatever, you know what I mean? Cassiopeia, Big Dipper, whatever. So those little things are really fun to add in there. And if you can hide things like that, you know, it's kind of extra special, or I don't know if it's extra special, but you're just like, you know, it's it, it adds a, another layer of interest, maybe I should say. Um, let's see. Bosch is usually a school brand in our disc. We didn't, all this stuff, all the art supplies for that middle school art program were all ordered, um, by, um, it's, we, none of it was supplied by the school. So, uh, we didn't go, we ordered it from all Dick Blick basically, um, when it came to that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know when, I, I don't remember what, when, uh, brand that was for those pencils like that. Okay, but anyways, um, yeah, Carol, add those stars in there. It's looking better to me too, Paula, you know? Um, for me too, because I haven't tried this on this thing, you know? I mean, I, I did like two experiments on it, but I thought, man, this paper seems to be capable of taking so much. That does look really good up there. Here, let me add a couple little... Okay, this is no longer like a Ryan there, but who cares? Um, yeah, I thought this paper, this vinyl, is really something. Linda, you got to find yourself. Linda, Linda is now looking for eleven by seventeen vinyl for her scenes. <laughs> the only problem with this vinyl, though. Um, if you want to do like, you know, this type of colored pencil work, if you get the brilliance pads and you like this look right here, you know, I might have to get like five, you know, I don't know, whatever, four brilliance reinkers now, because I'm going to be laying down a lot of brilliance ink. I think unless there's like a, an easier, quicker way or something like that, you know, or some other type of thing that you want to use on there, I don't know, gesso or something, you know what I mean? Something that's going to uh, um, work on there, or, you know, like some kind of like primer, you know, that we're not thinking about, you know, being kind of crafters and not doing stuff in painting, but um, um, I don't know, brilliance is the thing right now for me. I know that works, but I don't know, it'd be cool if we can kind of just sponge on really quickly um, some other type of base surface that, for one, is going to adhere and stick to this type of vinyl really easy and uh, will take um, the different types of inks, too. I mean, if we can find that, that'd be great, you know. I mean, right now the brilliance is working great, but I wouldn't mind some other type of uh, ink to use in its place or have an option, you know, and that would be really awesome. Okay, so going into this um, trunk here, so I think, you know, these trees are generally a little bit more kind of white, so just kind of adding this in at this time. I had to do them in dark colors, otherwise I wouldn't be able to see it. You know, there's this, like some kind of like white, you know, dye-based ink. I think there used to be, but it, I don't know, it wouldn't really be a dye-based, I don't know. I don't know what it was, but they called it white dye. Okay, and on the fence posts, they have um, highlights on them, but I'm adding in, I'm reiterating that right on here to make them look a little bit more dimensional like that, okay. I don't know if you get, I hope you can see that. Um, so here, um, where it gets a little bit more, I don't know, it's not muddy, but, you know, I'm stamped in this fence in some of that colored area. So, you know, it's, you know, the colors in the background are showing through. So you can just go in with your 
paint pen like this and just kind of reclaim the opacity of, you know, these rungs in here, or defining the opacity. Maybe it's not reclaiming them, but going like that. And see that fence just stands out a little bit more with these white highlights on there. So see, that, that's one of the things I'm doing too on here is um, things that aren't, you know, necessarily being like smoothly applied or, I don't know, you know, with any, um, or with without much of a sense of grace, okay? You know, in the background, the, the brilliance ink was like blotched on there, okay? These things on here just kind of, you know, I'm, I'm going on there kind of randomly and whatnot. At every step of the way, I'm just thinking, okay, I'm going to be covering this stuff up anyway. So at any point in time, when certain types of applications of whatever I'm using, colored pencils don't look good. I did a decent job with the colored pencils, I think, on this one. Um, not always so in the past, you know, because I'm, yeah, like I said, I don't know what I'm doing with those, but um, I just know that, you know, there's going to be something else that I'm going to be putting over the top of this stuff, so it it's not really going to matter as much, okay? I don't want to hurry the process, but... Um, if I'm not getting something that looks good at any point in time, it's just one of those things along the way, okay? It's not uh, it's not the end result at stage whatever, three of seven or something like that. So, and I always, I always like to point that out because um, a lot of times when people get into these processes like that, um, sometimes it's kind of hard to see, you know, what step five, you know, what the scene is going to look like at step five and they might start panicking at step three and even sometimes, you know, um, stop working on the piece because it's, you know, it's looking weird or kind of blotchy or whatever, you know, rough, uh, you know, and uh, very, uh, um, it's lacking, lacking, <laughs> yeah, lacking a, a certain amount of, uh, I don't know, kind of grace in terms of the the process there so if you've just logged on this is looking pretty good but you know along the way it wasn't you know in many different uh, steps there so just keep that in mind give it time and work through your processes like that All right, so at the base of these trees like that, I'm adding this little, look, I mean, this is really coming to life with this, you know? This is like adding in that light. It looks like that light is coming from behind there, like that. Now, do you see that difference right there? How different that looks? Or just with a little bit, I just put a little bit of tap. Same thing like right in here, like that. And see, I added some right down here, okay? And I'm not gonna put it everywhere in there. You wanna oscillate it, because you want this to be contrasting against something else so that looks really kind of nice but it's because you know I'm not doing it over the whole thing so it's contrasting against you know sharp and kind of diffused I guess in this case so here's this fence right here it's all uniformly um, black in this case. What was it? The stays on that we used right there, right? So let me just change some of it a little like this, okay? This is really dry on here too. Don't go in with a super wet, juicy, uh, you know, sloppy application of this white pigment ink. You want it really dry on here. Okay, my pad's really dry too. Or kind of getting there. But look at this right here. See this right here? Now, doesn't this fence, you know, look a little bit different now. Does it look more three-dimensional that way by having a little bit of it kind of illuminated like that in the light like that? Okay, so a little bit of change in, in the distance right here. I'm just kind of, I'm just picking some area. You know, I picked right there, so I'll leave that one a little bit more crisp. But if you put it here, then just don't do it there. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter where you put it, just as long as there's this a little bit of this oscillation of um, I, I guess texture, it looks like texture. It looks softer, doesn't it?
kind of make your cotton ball kind of dense too. Don't go with, uh, you know, tapping it like, like this, okay? Kind of make it a little bit dense like this and then flatten it out. You know, if you need to kind of prep it a little bit by prepping it down like that so it's nice and flat and you have that ink going in there. So it's, you know, it's not fraying every time you're tapping it on here, you know, and you have this kind of loose, uh, um, you know, fibers going all over the place in there. And for me, you do get a lot of fibers in here. So for me, I use this Brilliance ink all the time. So I have one for my cotton like that. And the other one is for stamping impressions. So if I'm going to stamp like a quote stamp or something like that up there, you know, I use this one right here. It, you know, it took me a year to do that. I was always scraping off, uh, you know, the cotton fibers off of this one. It's like, okay, I need to buy, I need to buy a second one like that. All right. So anyway. I'm not sure if I'm applying anything at all. It's like really, really dry. I need to get that ship. I need to get my uh, reinker in. All right, so I think that is that. I I really want to put some kind of little like deer or something like that at the uh, at the end there. We need some kind of focal point. Um, there's this little rider right there too. Would be kind of interesting. She'd be coming in like this. In fact, I think I'm going to do that. I think I like that one. Uh, let's go with the stays on, I think. Uh... Now, why didn't you think that, Linda? <laughs> I didn't know either. Hello, Cindy. You didn't miss too much at all, Cindy. Uh, we're about 10 minutes into this scene uh, from start to finish. <laughs> yeah, skip along, but uh, go. notice how blotchy my um, white uh, Brilliance ink applications were, you know. Um, I was, I really pointed out, um, early on in the, uh, in the process, just how blotchy everything looked, um, and how it also didn't matter that it was all blotchy in terms of that base coat of, a uh, uh, white ink. This is sticking like glue here. Okay, there we go. All right, but you see that figure right there? It looks okay as is, but um, white ink, okay. And, oh, this one's my, uh, this one's my good one. The cotton one. Okay, and then we'll take this and like these trees right here, you know how we reiterated colors, you know, throughout here, textures and everything like that. Um, I'm going to go in and we'll reiterate this same type of texturing and application of white or lighting, you can say too. And I'll put it at the base of this horse like that. So the horse is also kind of standing in that type of low line fog like that. So you've integrated that creature, you know, with that. So it's kind of that is related to this now because, you know, it's at the base of these types of things like this. Here's this lead-in, these visual lead-ins right here. Let's put a little bit more here to really reinforce that. And also, as this gets drier on here, it gets a little bit more see-through. So if you want to go a little bit lighter, then you might have to go with a second layer like this. Let me do this right down here. I really like that look right there. So I'm going to add this at the base of it down here like that a little bit more. Uh, 
Okay, so you have that softer bottom portion and that right there too. Anyway, you can add like little crystals up here too. I think that'd be cool to add in um, some little crystals. I did it on one piece and I, you know, um, it was semi-effective. I wasn't quite sure though, but there we have it right there. You can take this, this vinyl sticker paper so you can stick it to things too. You know, if you had a bottle, <laughs> you know, a wine bottle, you can put, uh, you know, whatever, uh, you know, write something on there, you know, Amontillado. <laughs> but vinyl sticker paper, I'll, I'll mount this on something else, but that's the gist of it right there. Um, yeah. Final piece. Okay, so on this piece right here, one of the things I wrote in the description is I wanted to try some different things on here. I knew that the colored pencils would work on there pretty good, um, but we incorporated in the pens here. I don't know, I used, I don't know, 10 times the amount of um, uh, colored pencils on this one that I did on my previous one too, where I was just using blues, which I love that look too, but... Um, uh, I don't know. Yeah, like right here. Here's my first test right here. I finished this one off a little bit more. I just colored in the, uh, the, um, the brown here. But see, here's, this is just the holographic one. But there you have that snowfall or stars up there. But see, you can see it more like that. Look how busy that is with that texturing up there. Then you can't really see it at all like this. It's just, I don't know. Well, you can see it a little bit. I don't know, it could be whatever Northern Lightsy type of look. But see, this is just where I did those little touches of uh, that blue down in this area right here. I'm thinking that the more colored pencils you want to use on here, maybe you need to use more of the Brilliance Ink. I'm not sure. I think having a little bit of thicker layer of this probably kind of creates a little bit of a surface that's a little bit more accepting of the multiple layers of, of uh, colored pencil. I'm not sure though, okay? I gotta think that is, is probably right though, because I mean, you can't go with colored pencils on here. It's just, you know, it's a slick surface, okay? It's not going to show up at all. So if you do wanna use, I don't know, I, I use like, I don't know, there's just like seven colors right in here. There's like three greens. There was the two browns, black, and I think yellow in here, right? Like right in this little area right here. So I'm thinking that having a decent layer of the brilliance probably contributed to the ability to do that without it kind of balling up on here. And again, I'm not sure, you know, it might be different for different brands of colored pencils too. So I'm not sure, you know, let me see something right here. All right, so that is probably, yeah, it's a little bit more aligned. Okay, so I just adjusted my um, exposure here now that this got kind of dark like that, but um, yeah. I, so anyways, I think this is a really uh, fun surface to use. And uh, I don't know, um, you know, as, as people try this and use like different brands of things, um, try uh, if you can let me know how it goes especially if something well if something's working but especially if you find something that's not working for you in terms of your vinyl maybe the brand and the uh, media that you've used on there let me know about that too so we can kind of get a little bit of a you know kind of a knowledge base of a uh, i don't know this new kind of combination of a uh, of a uh, media and, uh, you know, it'll, you know, whatever we can do to speed up our uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, usage of this. Let me see. Let me see. C.M. Hawkins. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Gesso would be worth a try. I'm interested in that one there. If, and especially if it's, the Gesso would be um, smooth enough for clean impressions where it's not going to be leaving too much of a... Uh, um, a surface, but the gesso, just like the Brilliance inks, are water-based. So I think it has a chance of a uh, of uh, working there. Um, Travel Dreamer, yeah. Uh, 
thanks, Annie. I'm glad you like the trees there. Now, the trees to me were really busy, but see, what I do is I put in that white in there. Let me look at this right here. See this? There's a tree down here, and there's a tree up here. I'm going to separate that a little bit more with a little bit of distance here. I'm going to put a little bit of this white over this one right here. And let's see if I can push that back a touch. I won't go too much on there, but... You know, see that, that little dulling right there? I mean, I, I should go a little bit more, but... Um, yeah, something like that. I don't know, it, it creates a little bit more depth within that space right there. It can probably use a little bit more tweaking right here, you know, uh, throughout, but... Um, I think that is enough for me for now here. Although I hardly ever go back to these things. I, I went back on my uh, my monster maps a little bit just because they're so huge in a couple of different areas. But um, yeah, I yeah, the, the gesso would be something to try out there. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess we do have the eight and a half by 11s, Linda. I guess we'll just start with that. But the thing about the eight and a half by 11s, it, it uses so much brilliance ink, you know what I mean? That's the thing, it's getting, kind of those ground layers like that. But I just think that, you know, I think that this combination is worth it, you know, to spend that amount of time. But like I said, if we can get that um, base layer down there, or maybe like something like this, say this whole entire bottom layer um, is if we know we're going to stamp that, and let's say the gesso works, but you don't want like a strong, you know, real like gesso-y thing like it's been painted up there. See, and right here, that just looks like clouds around those trees to me. All right. Um, which I don't think looks bad at all, you know, having this white come out from there. So maybe something like this, if it did work, you can go like a um, gesso in an area, then you use a little bit of the, you know, the, the brilliance up in the upper areas like that, maybe that would be, you know, and you can use a combination of different um, base layer mediums like that. That might work out, you know, so on those larger format pieces, you know, that would be the thing that would be, I don't know, the thing that would be a little bit, um, I don't know, daunting of a notion is, you know, blocking out like a half page worth of a area that we're going to be stamping the imagery in or something like that too. So I don't know. Um, I don't know. And then again, I don't know if, if we're using like paint pens like this, maybe you just stamp it directly. Maybe we don't need to do the blocking out up here of those trees up top like that, because there's so much of the, uh, the acrylic paint pen used in there anyways, which would block it off. I don't know. You know, it, it remains to be uh, explored there like that. So let me see like that. Look at that there. But I don't know. It's a pretty exciting, um, different, you know, combination like that. I, I love the the colored pencils down here. If this was super bright and vibrant and everything like that, it might be a little bit too much of the similar for my eyes like that. But this is just this grassy area down here, the water, you know, it's nice and mellow, you know, or something like this again, like that too down there, those mellow tones like that. I just love the look at the colored pencils against that um, from a textural standpoint. Look at these, yeah, see these clouds up here too, getting that area just kind of, it was mellow, busy, mellow. <laughs> in, terms of, uh, in terms of like visual contrasts. Uh, yeah. So anyways, uh, yeah, it, it created a little bit of a, Caroline, it created a little bit of a, visual um, destination point in there, having that person like that. It created a nice um, transition also, I think in terms of uh, land to sky, having that person right there. This visually, another thing that would look cool up here, I mean, you can do it on this piece too, but if I didn't have this person like this, I thought it was okay. It could be an animal or something like that. Or if you didn't want anything in there, to me, this area up here, is just perfect for a quote, but the quote I would stamp it on a separate piece of paper and mount it on another color, maybe a little green or something like that, and put it up here. But this would be a perfect spot for some sort of word stamp up there. So it needed some sort of um, 
I don't know, anchor point in there. And words or people or animals tend to do that. It'd be good, you know, or if you had a little cabin right here, you know, next to the creek or something like that. Something like that would have been good up in that area. Which stamp did you use for the creek? Annie, it's the snowy um, creek. Um, where is it? Uh, right here. I think it's 359G or something like that. But snowy creek? Colored in greens and browns, you know? Then it's your grassy creek. <laughs> So yeah, keep that in mind, everyone, you know, those snowy types of things, you know, it's, uh, it's anything you want it to be, any, any season you want it to be, um, you know, if you did it in, I don't know, let's say you did all this green in red or something like that, it could be a red rock type of area out in, uh, you know, Arizona or something like that. Wouldn't that be cool with like an aqua green stream coming through there? So it doesn't even have to be like snow. You can make it grass. It could be rock. It just depends on how you color it there. You know, it could be whatever you want it to be. The brayer in the application of the gesso, I was thinking about, we need some sort of like nice flat application of that media. And maybe the gesso, I'm thinking the gesso can kind of, um, it can potentially, um, um, go on a little bit blotchy, but you go over it, I think you potentially layer it down like that, and then it can kind of bead, but then let it set and dry, and then go over it again, and then again, and build it up in thin layers like that probably. I wouldn't, you know, think we can get it in one fell swoop. I think if we let it dry, there's potential in that, especially in those, you know what I mean? If we're doing like a card like this, you know, adding in that, uh, Brilliance thing down here takes, you know, like a minute or something like that. But I really wanted to build this one up because I knew how much um, colored pencil that I wanted to try on there. So um, I really built it up and really kind of blocked off this area. Let me see if I got it, how, if I got it pretty well. Let's see if any of these stars are showing down here. Can we? Yeah, I don't see it. Okay, so... I think I got it pretty good. I blocked it out pretty good. Sometimes on my previous ones, when I went like this, you know, I had stars like showing through images, you know, I mean, it's not a big deal, but um, like, I'm not sure if this one right here, let's see. Okay, I see it right down here. You can see a little bit of color. I mean, it's no big deal, but, um, like if, it, if this was the starry one, I don't know if I'd want stars down here. You know, I wouldn't want them too prominent. But I mean, if they show a little bit, I mean, it's not like any big deal. But um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I really wanted to, uh, you know, uh, do the uh, the colored pencil tests on here. And then I don't, I, th okay, here's the thing about these pens too. I don't know why it would be the case, but I think it is. Um, when I do these pens, especially this brand right here, on cardstocks and foils, I think it was, for some reason to me, I felt I needed to layer. I mean, there's a pretty good differentiation between some of these lightest of colors. Well, let me see if it did. Let me see. See, this yellow is, this yellow stands out a little bit more, you know, on here when it's, you know, freshly applied, but it didn't blend in with the background as much as it seems to do on cardstocks. Or maybe, I'm trying to think if I used it on other photo papers, but it seemed to retain a little bit more opacity when applied on top of this. I don't know if it's in my imagination though, but I, I some on some papers it seems like I just have to keep layering it, layering it, layering it to get more opaque. But I don't know, it seemed like on the first layer of whatever color I was going with it, it worked pretty well. So I don't know, I, am I, are we giving up, you know, uh, certain types of papers going forward? You know, am I going to be working on vinyl, white sticker paper over, you know, glossy white? I don't know, you know. 
but it seems like it can open up some potential um, doors for certain types of looks. And the good thing about vinyl, it seems to be available on a um, on a retail basis in all over the place, wherever you are in different countries or whatever, you know, it seems like the vinyls are more readily available to the public than like a glossy card stock. So thing is on this one, I can't blend in um, like um, dye based inks on this um, type of paper. It just, you know, it grabs the ink too fast. I can't blend them around at all. So um, yeah, I'm not sure uh, about uh, that type of application on here. It just, uh, I don't know, unless I would have to lay down the, the white, you know what I mean? I don't know, I'm not gonna probably do that. I would probably just use the colored pencils. Yeah, I don't know. So experiment around. <clears throat> you stamped the horse effortlessly. Oh, uh, thanks, uh, Caroline. Um, but yeah, the horse, uh, it's stuck, you know, because of that, uh, you know, the stays on. I, I need to work faster with the stays on. It sticks like glue on this stuff, you know? Uh, you know how it stays on? It really adheres to whatever you're stamping it on. On vinyl, if you haven't stamped on, um, stays on on vinyl yet that emulsion or whatever coating is on there, it seems to be a little bit of extra stickiness. So as you're peeling it off, you know, I don't know, just be prepared. You might be like creating dents into your paper because you're like peeling it off, you know, and it's like creasing it and stuff like that. Just kind of expect that going into it. I'm getting, you know, this paper's like really dented up and creased all over the place. You know, if you look at it, you know, like closely, you know, it's not smooth anymore because of where I'm peeling this off. I'm like peeling off like a, you know, a sticker off of something. That's what it feels like. Well, it is a sticker, but, um, you know, just kind of know that going into it and you'll run into it. And, you know, when you run into it, it won't be any kind of surprise for you. You know, it's, it happens, you know, and then I'm going to mount this up on something anyway. Okay. Now, as people have asked me, do I use the sticker aspect of it and just, you know, sticker it down or am I using my tape runner? <laughs> and I, I don't know if any of you watched my other video, you know, when I laid it down on that piece of paper, I think if I do this, I'm going to lay it down on a bigger piece and trim it afterwards, you know, rather than having that little slight, you know, border on there and trying to get this down on there exactly straight because it's just too big for me to do. I, you know, I tapped it down and it, it was all crooked, you know, it wasn't, I don't know, I got it reasonably straight, but on something like this larger one, I just might use my tape runner like that because I can position it easier on that, you know, that mounting paper that I'm doing. But I don't know, that looks pretty good too, huh? Without any of that, uh, you know, without that super loud background like that. But that's the killer application right there, you know. It's a uh, Aspen, you know, Colorado, whatever, Colorado Aspen writing. And then this is like the the disco room Aspen, <laughs> like that. So anyways, yeah, expect the, uh, expect uh, certain types of things to, you know, but don't let it frustrate you, you know, going into it. And remember, um, you know, certain types of things, you know, certain types of things don't stamp out or whatever. Just, you know, just keep layering, put your additional layers on top of it and see how it turns out. That's what I would recommend here. So keep that in mind. All right. Anyway, let's see. Glad you like it, uh, Linda. Uh, been out and about. 15 Celsius here. Oh, and it's Father's Day in Australia. Well, happy Father's Day uh, to anyone down there in uh, Australia. Have you tried alcohol markers on that vinyl? I haven't done that yet. I'm sure it would apply up here. I don't think I could blend them though, Laura. So I'd be really chicken to do that. Now, here's the thing about the alcohol markers on the um, the Brilliance inks. A lot of times I use them down there in areas like that. I have a feeling that um, it might lift that ink off of there. It's grabbed on there pretty good. So I don't know, you can try it. Um, try to, you, you're talking about the alcohol markers on top of the brilliance that's been applied to the, uh, the vinyl or just alcohols directly on here. I mean, I'm sure, you know, alcohol directly on there would be, you know, 
it would go on there. Um, but again, you know, something like that on there, like so. Let me see something. I'm just going on with this lighter one like this. Yeah, see that? That is just on there. There is no way with a, like a, this is just a lighter color right here, but there is just no way that you're going to be able to blend that out. See, I went with that one little streak like that and just going over the top of it. That is stuck like that, okay? Now, I have used um, alcohol inks on photo, white photo paper though, printer paper, uh, like inkjet paper, and it works really great on that. But this vinyl sticker paper, it's got to be a different formula than that. Um, uh, Uh, where's my photo paper? Uh, huh. I thought I had it. Oh, here we go. I was looking for a smaller pack of it, my four by sixes, but you know, the Kodograph, you know, this, these types of photo papers like this. This type of surface on here, I would have thought it would be the same type of thing because, you know, I think it's meant to be used with the same same types of printers, right? But um, it doesn't it doesn't work the same. I can blend alcohol markers on that type of, you know, printer paper, but I can't do it on this vinyl at all, okay? I can really blend those markers on um, that type of white, you know, just your typical white printer paper, gloss, semi-gloss, etc. That's why I like using it on that type of paper because I lay it down and the alcohol are actually really on the surface. And then I just take my lighter colors and I blend them around and whatnot, you know, and it works great. But on this stuff right here, what goes on stays on like that. Now, like I said, though, I haven't used like alcohol markers on top of the brilliance, the white brilliance, though. So I don't know. Yeah. All right. So anyways, that is that scene. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. It is a crazy type of look right there. You know, I don't know. I figured we'd go crazy on this one to go for that like super ultra shimmer like that. But I think on this paper, too, you know, that would look really cool up in the sky like that too. I don't know, it kind of makes for kind of an exciting kind of a, I don't know, combination, like I said. You know, I really like the colored pencils down there like that. I think the, the paint pens look pretty good in here, you know. Um, it might be a little bit uh, busy with these ones like that too. Oh, here's the thing that I want to try too, okay. This is such a busy type of, color scheme up there it's it's like movement too you know when you get that type of paper it's moving around it's 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 paper in motion really you know unless you're only looking at it from one angle but no one's going to do that you know people can get a card like this and do this so i think i think a monochromatic area down here like you know a winter scene or something like that just an all in gray scale or even if you did something like this like a, it would be like a black and white photograph, but with this or this up in the sky would look really cool in theory. <laughs> I'd have to try it out though, I don't know. But I think that would look cool, you know, um, just to have it like that. So you'd have this kind of this really muted soft type of look down here with, you know, gray tones and whatever, gray, gray scale. And, um, having those colors up top, I think it'd be kind of interesting to do that. I want to try that too. Now that would go really fast too, I think, you know, because when you're working only in grayscale, you know, you have like gray and black to use, you know, I, I, you, I, I wouldn't even use any, I probably wouldn't even use a, a gray a colored pencil. I'd probably just use a black colored pencil. So we're talking about a pretty quick application. It, I think it would look, you know, I, I think in theory, it, it would look really um, interesting like that. So I want to try that out. But um, yeah, and the sticker paper too, like I said, you can stick it to different things, you know, like a bottle or something like that, you know, I think that would be kind of interesting, you know, with this on something, you know, wrapped around, you know, like this. 
<laughs> or you can write something on there, you know, uh, you know, join me for coffee and put that, you know, give, put that on a, a mug and give it to your, uh, give it to someone for Father's Day and, you know, Australia today. All right. Okay. So anyways, thanks so much for joining in. Uh, yeah. Uh, hope you have fun. I know a lot of people are getting some vinyls out there. Uh, let us know how it's going or post some, uh, examples of it. Let us know what's working, what maybe didn't work. Laura's going to do a whole, um, series of alcohol markers on vinyl, um, this weekend for us. <laughs> would be cool to find out, you know, all these different types of applications. If someone knows how to, you know, like the, the doing those like painting with um, alcohol markers, I love, or alcohol inks, you know, they use those alcohol inks and do those like paintings of stuff like that. It would be fascinating to see something like that on these types of uh, holographic vinyls or whatever. I wish, okay, here's the thing too. I If anyone sees... Um, vinyls I, I i didn't i don't see any i saw a brown bag style of vinyl someone had mentioned that vinyl um site or something like that out there but i just want are do are, are there vinyls like just that are um like uh colored like a like a mixed assorted thing of like dark blue blue stuff like that out there orange you know I want to get like a multicolor pack, but not of the holographic style. There are, there, right? Everyone's using all the type of stuff. They're cutting it out with their crickets and everything like that. I don't know. It wasn't on Amazon though, so I need to find out uh, that type of thing. All right. So, anyways, yeah. Thanks again. And I need to go have like a cold beverage my look at this my ice completely melted in my drink here i don't know it's probably like 85 in here uh now that i'm not but in the meantime we were transported to a much cooler um area within this scene hey i think those trees look pretty three-dimensional in there i love getting um kind of that dimension from our media combinations like that you know on a two-dimensional surface, if we can get like real three-dimensional types of looks, I think that's always good. So, yeah. All right. Thanks again, everyone. Uh, one, four, three vinyl. Thank you, Travel Dreamer. I'll check that out. Have a good night, everyone, or daytime, morning, uh, wherever you are. <laughs>